In this video, I want to share with you some tips and information that helped my wife and I build a successful woodworking business. I started with three borrowed tools to get to where I am today. I went through the trial and errors. I want to share with you the information that I've learned that has helped me sell products both online and in person and to hopefully help you make some money woodworking. How you doing? I'm Matt with 731woodworks.com. Today, we're going to sell some woodwork. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. We make awesome woodworking projects with basic tools. I also give out advice as best I can on how to grow your woodworking business, how to sell your woodworking projects, and how to make money woodworking. There's enough success going around that we can all share in this. I want to share with you what's worked for me, so hopefully it'll work for you too. You can build your woodworking business up. Maybe you can take it full-time or just keep it part-time like me. Stick around if you want to learn how to grow your business and make some money woodworking. Let's get started. Stick around at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a power tip on how to grow your woodworking business. It is the most important thing you can do to make sales. With this woodworking business over the last three and a half years, I've been able to take my wife on small trips. I've been able to buy her some gifts that I would never have been able to buy her. I've been able to buy my son a used car. So I've even been able to splurge a little bit on myself and get a home gym set up that I, without this business would have never been possible. And that doesn't even include the tools that I've been able to buy because of the profits I've made woodworking. So this can be a fun and enjoyable hobby, but it can also be a fun and enjoyable business that you can make a little bit of money on. Let me show you what I've done. Ask yourself these three questions. Who is my customer? What do they want? And why am I in this? Am I doing it for a hobby or a business? Answer those three questions, you'll set yourself on the right track. So you wanna start out and set some goals for your business. Create a small plan, have a plan of action that you're gonna use for your business. So just a small plan is something like, uh, you're gonna build this piece of furniture and you're gonna sell it for this much money. That's a plan. Or you know you're gonna need this tool to make this project. Or once you sell that product, you're gonna buy this tool to help you with the next product. So for instance, if you're building those outdoor chair and table sets, you can take the money from that, reinvest in say a pocket hole jig so you can start making other projects. Just plan ahead, think about what you're gonna need in the future, just make a short-term plan and that'll help you out. With that being said, you wanna keep your business as lean as possible starting out. So you don't wanna overspend on unnecessary tools, supplies, or just frivolous things that you're not gonna need when you first start out. So be very frugal with your money when you first start out. That's what I did, very deliberate on what I was buying. I knew what tool I needed, pretty much estimated some of the material. I even had to go back to the store to buy a board or two here and there because I didn't want to overspend. It's okay to be the guy who still has his lunch money from the third grade. If you're making this a business, you need to promote yourself. That was very difficult for me to do. Still to this day, I kind of have a hard time doing that. It feels like, it's not a brag, but it feels like you're trying to push your stuff on people. However, remember, if you look through your social media feed right now, you're gonna see tons of people posting pictures of their coffee from their favorite coffee place or their food or their favorite tools, things like that. So they're actually promoting other businesses. So why not promote yourself? Take pictures of your product, take pictures of you working, post those up, let people know what you're doing. It's a good way to get yourself out there. My first few projects that I posted online, I was scared to death that when I post those that somebody was gonna see them what they were gonna think about them, was anybody gonna buy it, it's natural. Just put it out there, see what happens. Some people's gonna love it, some people's not. It's just the way of the world. So if you're serious about your woodworking business, you need to label yourself as something other than a hobbyist. From the very first sale you make, you're building your brand and you're building what people think about your brand. You're the face of that brand. When you make a delivery or when people show up to your house or shop to pick up their item, dress appropriately. Don't be dressed in your work clothes with uh, sawdust all over you and wood glue all in your hair. I ain't got that problem. But make sure you dress the part. You, you don't have to dress in your Sunday best. You don't have to be in a suit and tie, but be dressed nice and represent yourself well. That's very important. One thing I heard recently, which is ring really true with me, people will do business with people they know. Does that mean they have to know you personally? No, but if you ever met a person, when you walked away, you're like, I like that guy, be that guy. Don't be fake, but just be genuine, honest with your customer. They'll respect that, they'll keep coming back. So you wanna make sure your customer gets a premium product. Even if you're making out of construction grade lumber, you're putting your time, your effort, and you make sure that that is just right when it leaves your shop. Those people are coming to you for a premium handmade product. They're not going to Walmart, they're not going to Ikea or wherever else and buying a press board, off the shelf, thousands of them made piece of furniture. They're coming to you for a handmade item that's made by you, that's special. Realize how special that is that they want a handmade product from you and you're providing them with a nice service 
that they may not get somewhere else. When I get a commission sale where I'm building something for a customer that they've requested, that they've ordered from me, I always send them progress pictures. When I buy the lumber, send them a picture of the lumber. Say, hey, I got your material. Fixing to start tomorrow or fixing to start today. That lets them know you're working on the product. When you get the frame of your, say, table built, once you get the frame built, send a picture of that frame. Say, hey, I got your frame together. Fixing to paint that. That gives them updates on the progress as you go along. It lets them know, A, that they're a part of the process. It makes them feel like they're a part of the process. It gives them a stronger bond to that piece of furniture and you as a maker. And it just shows a good faith that you're actually working on the product. Taking custom orders, I will give you a tip. So if you don't know the customer at all, what I do is I require a 50% non-refundable deposit upfront before I ever start the project. They can send that through PayPal. They can bring cash to me. I don't take checks. So you let them pay you the 50%. That's going to cover your cost of materials, some of your labor time once you get started in supplies. If they back out on you, then you're not out any money. That's a good tip. Do that. Now, I have a few customers that are very loyal. They keep coming back. They keep buying things. I never require a deposit from them because I know they're going to pay me at the end of the day. So there needs to be a demand for your product also. So keep up with current trends, whether that be farmhouse, shabby chic, mid-century modern, whatever's coming next. Just keep an eye on your local marketplaces. Keep an eye when you go to stores, furniture stores, and see what is actually there. That'll give you an idea of what's selling. Are other people in your area making items to sell and having success with it? It's not a bad idea to reach out to your local craftsmen or your local woodworkers in your area and see what's working for them. I don't have a problem sharing it. Some people might, if they do, just move on. There's one in my area when I can't take the job or when he can't take the job, we actually send it to the other one and say, or send the, the customer to that person and say, call this guy, he might can help you out. That way you're sharing work when I'm overloaded and I can't get to the project within a, a good time frame, I'll send it to that guy. If he can get to it, then he gains a customer and we can build a friendship like that. So don't be afraid to reach out and work with your fellow craftsmen. So starting out, you're probably not gonna have a customer base. What I recommend is you either build items or you can store them post them for sale, or build items for yourself, which I've done a lot of. We've built TV stands, we've built side tables, we've built a dining room table, we've built uh, blanket ladders, we've built tons of stuff that we would actually use and we actually like in our home. And we, then I take pictures of that and post it for sale saying, hey, I can make this. Then when they order, you just give them a time frame, say a week, two weeks, whatever it's gonna take you to make that item, tell them the price, work back and forth on that. Have you ever heard the term content marketing? All that is is basically your marketing, your content. So you're making tables, you're making cutting boards, you're making whatever you're making, you need to market that to the public. Get yourself a Facebook page, Instagram, or even YouTube if you wanna start one of those. Uh, make videos of you making the items, so the finished products. Let people know what you're doing so you can market your own content. You're marketing your own product. Do some market research, do some business research. Look at other businesses, even if it's not a woodworking business and see how they started, what worked for them, what didn't work for them. So if you're really serious about building a business, get business minded and start looking at other products. There's tons and tons of videos on YouTube that you can start off with just trying to figure out how to run a business and it'll help you a lot. Now we got all that out of the way, let's talk about where you actually sell the products. In person, if you're gonna sell in person or locally, I started out posting all my products on my personal Facebook page or click that marketplace button on the bottom or wherever it's at, go to the Facebook marketplace, post it there. In the search bar, search your town's name and yard sale or town's name and classified, the word yard sale or classified. You'll see a bunch of groups in that area and search the towns around you as well. Use the other town's name, yard sale, other town's name, classified and start joining those groups and then post your items for sale in there. Even if you don't make a sale, I've gotten tons of commission work off of that because people will contact me and say, hey, I see you made this table. Can you make this style? I see you made a dining table. Can you make end table or a coffee table? So you can gain customers that way. Locally, we have a place called the Marketplace. It's basically, it's like a flea market, but it's not a flea market. I guess it really is a flea market, but you can rent booths in there for like $90 a month. I've personally never done it because I was getting plenty of work without that. But I've seen a bunch of other woodworkers or craftsmen or even building arts and crafts put those things in the booths. They rent the booth by the month. It's a certain size booth. They put their items in there and then that actual building that all these stores or all these booths are in will get a commission off your sales. You can figure that into the price. That's a good way to get your work out there and have a actual storefront for your 
product. If you use Facebook to sell stuff, be sure to check Facebook Messenger. If you're not friends with people, it actually won't alert you that you've got a message. You'll have to actually go into the Messenger app and find those messages from other people that are not your friends. Selling online, all right? A lot of people want to sell online. I personally don't ship big items. So tables, end tables, dining room tables, anything that's extremely large, I don't ship because I don't want to get into freight shipping. Uh, I've ordered some gym equipment. It's about $150, $160 when that heavy stuff comes in on a freight truck. So I would assume if you were selling a table, A, you're gonna have to package it up in a crate or something to get it, keep it protected while you ship it. And you're gonna have to pay for the freight shipping. So you're gonna have to include that in your price. I'm no expert on that. Probably wanna look somewhere else because I don't, I don't ship large items. However, yesterday I hit 250 sales on Etsy. I've been on there about two years. So that doesn't sound like a lot of sales, but when you work a full-time job and do this part-time, building products for Etsy has taken up most of my time. I can do a full video on Etsy selling if you're interested. Just drop a comment below and let me know and I will look into doing a full video just for selling woodwork on Etsy. So my experience with Etsy is, you ever heard the term, it takes money to make money? Well, that's my experience with Etsy. So I started on Etsy, posted some products. I think the first month I got one sale. The second month I may have got one or two. And so it starts very, very slow. So I, I let my store just kind of sit there. I added products here and there. I started doing research online on how to sell on Etsy. I would watch tons of videos, figure out how to do my descriptions, my tags, the pictures, the whole nine yard, and was able to figure out how to get uh, found in some of their searches which is what you're looking for. You got to build for the search on Etsy. And then I realized that the more videos I watched that I was going to need to buy ads on Etsy to make money. And I'll show you some of my stats real quick and kind of open the curtain per se and show you how uh, much money I made on Etsy and how much money I've spent trying to make money on Etsy. All right, so this is the last 12 months on Etsy. As you can see on the left from July, 2019 to July, 2020, my sales and credits is $20,152. You're thinking, holy crap, that's a lot of money. It is, it's good money. However, if you look on the right, you see fees and taxes. So I've been charged $1,028 in transaction fees. I spent $4,500 on shipping. I spent $1,400 on ads and then $41 on listing fees. So you take that out, that leaves about $13,000. A give or take and then you can see here month to month uh starting in uh, july 2020 and going all the way down back to august of 2019 uh what my sales were for the month what my fees and taxes were for the on the right that doesn't show you the ad money coming out every month so as you can see i've had a little bit of success on etsy i could probably have more success if i had more time uh, but right now with the work schedule full-time work schedule family time etc it's hard to find enough time to continuously build product so it just depends on what you're building on as how well you're going to do on etsy like i said i'd be happy to do a full etsy video talking about different things if you want me to do that just hit me up in the comments below and let me know etsy is a great way to make money you just got to be willing to be patient and start posting products uh, i'll give you some quick tips on etsy you need four or five products ready to go when you open your store you need to add products regularly to your store because every time you add a product it gets a little boost and then uh, make sure you just do some research on the search descriptions titles tags things like that to optimize them to sell i've given you a lot of information in a short amount of time on how to sell your woodworking or how to make money woodworking if you enjoy this information or if you have ideas for other videos drop a comment below i always look in the comments i try to respond to everybody and i'll take the best ideas and try to make videos out of them here's that power tip i promise you, do not underestimate the power of the picture when you take pictures of your product make them good that will sell the product if you just take a picture of the plain old table or the plain old end table without anything else on it it may or may not sell if you take it in a dim room it's gonna look like crap take good quality pictures if you have a modern cell phone it's got an excellent camera on there just light your item up with some good lighting wait for it to be daylight on a good sunny day make sure it's not too washed out with too much light washed that's a southern term wash make sure you don't overexpose the, the image you don't have to be a photographer to take good images you're going to make sure that you want to stage the item what that means is you put other items on your product so if it's a kitchen table put a centerpiece on it make it look nice if it's a end table put some decorations on there a lamp something like that so you're staging that item people can picture their stuff on there 
and it's not just a plain item. So it doesn't matter if I'm building a commission piece or I've built it for myself. I always take that piece inside my own home. I'll put a bunch of stuff on it, make it look nice. I don't, my wife does that. She's the creative one and decorative one. She has a very good talent for that stuff. So she puts all these decorations on there. She makes it look extremely nice. And then I take pictures of it. That will sell your product faster than anything else you can do. Good quality pictures. Think about it. When you're scrolling through somebody else's feed or if you're on a website that's selling items, good quality pictures will sell you that item. You look at that piece and you're like, man, that's a nice looking. If you take good pictures, it will sell. That's a power tip. So you want good lighting, you want good staging, and then you frame them right, take good pictures. If the room's too small for the item, it's gonna look weird. If the room is too big for the item, so make sure that the staging is right, the room is right, the lighting is right. Take multiple pictures of it, not just one or two. Take several angles of it, get close up on the finish, get close up on that wood grain. That'll sell your item. I'm telling you, pictures will sell it. You can talk about it all day long, you can have a good fancy description of it, but if you don't have a good quality picture, you're not gonna sell it. It's gonna look cheap, it's gonna look unprofessional, and nobody's gonna wanna do business with that or not the type of customers you're trying to seek anyway. Obviously, I can't guarantee any of this is gonna work for you, but I did wanna share with you what has worked for me, what I have discovered has worked, and it's not gonna work on every platform, whether that be Etsy or your online marketplaces, or even locally. Give some of these a try and maybe they'll work for you. My hope is that I can help you make more sales, make more money, and build a business out of this. I think a lot, a lot of people underestimate how much money you can actually make selling woodworking items. It's enjoyable to build these things. I like building woodworking. It's a good stress reliever. I can make a little bit of side money. It's, a, it's just a good side business for me. If you found this video helpful and you want to support this channel, you can do so by becoming a patron. Link in the description below. If you don't wanna do that, there's some merch down below as well. Also, if you share this on your social media or just give a comment below, I'll give you a virtual fist bump. So I wanna help you grow your business. You can check out my top five products that sell video right there. Or if you're a beginner, you can see my top woodworking projects for beginners playlist is right there.